There is a new disastrous poll out uh, from Quinnipiac, and it finds that nearly a majority of Americans think that Donald Trump might be a racist. Hmm. Now, already I can hear the people frantically typing, he's not racist. He, oh, Donald Trump could never be a racist. You're the racist. You're the real racist. You're racist against white people. Mm. Mm. Guilty. No, not guilty. Because <laughs> that's not a thing. You can't actually be a racist against people with that are actually in power because racism actually involves power dynamics. You can be prejudiced against people, but racism, no, it generally has to do with using systems to oppress another minority or a minority. But anyway, uh, that sentiment uh, that, oh no, uh, people who are, or, uh, that, that President Trump is not racist is not shared by 49% of American voters who say that Trump is in fact, yes, a racist. 44% of uh, voters think that uh, racist beliefs were a motive in Trump's immigration policy, while only 50% said Trump has a sincere interest in controlling our borders. And by the way, going back to uh, how many people think Trump is not a racist, that's 47%. So you have a majority of America, the majority of the country, saying, yeah, the guy's a racist. Wonderful. Uh, now, here's the thing, right? And the immigration policy, a majority of people do say Trump has a sincere interest in controlling our borders. I, I disagree with that. Here's why. He actually has more of an interest in demagoguing Muslims and Mexicans. Why? Because it whips up the base. And look, Trump wants to build a wall because that'll be a monument to President Trump. Oh, look at that. See, I, I'm, I, I had them build a giant wall and now it's going to be there forever, even when I'm not president. This man's ego is bigger than any wall. Uh, but look, as far as the demagoguing, he whips up the racists, man. Um, and let me give you some examples of statements that he's made in the past that do whip up the racist. Uh, for example, uh, his first campaign speech was something about how Mexicans are rapists and criminals. Though some, I assume, are good people. They're good people. Mm. Now, he also said things like, Haitian immigrants all have AIDS, and Nigerian immigrants will never go back to their huts in Africa. Now, hearing those statements, if you still say, no, President Trump, he's not a racist at all, you are deeply ignorant. All right, anyway, uh, let me give you another example which maybe is not quite as bad. Uh, in his remarks to Navajo veterans, he said, you were here long before any of us were here. Although we have a representative in Congress who say, uh, who they say was here long ago, they call her Pocahontas. You're talking to Navajo Indians and you use a slur against Elizabeth Warren. What? No. <laughs> okay. He also asked, why do we want people from shithole countries coming here? Shithole countries. Uh, again, referring to Haiti. So look, those are just a couple of examples. You can go back into his past when he took out an entire page op-ed article in like the New York Times or something uh, to call for the Central Park Five to be executed. This was after they were found to be innocent. Oh, they're innocent. I don't care. I don't care if they're innocent. They're black. They must have done it. Which, by the way, they're not all black. Um, they're mixed minorities. Nonetheless, I don't care. I don't care. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Anyway, execute them. I don't care if they're innocent. I don't care if they've been proven innocent. I hate them. They should be murdered. And of course, the history of, uh, of not letting certain people of certain races live in his apartments. Yeah. Even if they could afford being able to live in those apartment, uh, apartments, Look, there is a deep racist history among the Trump family. But as far as some of the stuff he said, it's not a dog whistle. It's a human whistle. It's so loud we can all hear it. Because there's nothing hiding that. It's out in the open. Now look, um, here's the thing. Trump does that. Yes, because he's racist, but also because he profits politically from it. I mean, look, if you were, if you were smart... I guess if at least if you were savvy and trying to get PR, 
And if you were deeply racist, you'd be like, well, look, it's not politically good to say these things, so I guess I'm not going to do that. With Trump, it is a political calculation because it's like, what, the people, they eat it up. This is what regular Americans are thinking. So, and look, they wanted, uh, he's profiting off demagoguing these people to racists and, and to people who might be economically desperate. And I understand that there are some people that are desperate to blame for the ills of predatory capitalism, but that's not the majority of the people who support him. People, for example, who are more well off voted for Trump by bigger margins than people who are poor. People who are poor actually voted more for Hillary Clinton. Um, so these aren't people that are worried about being displaced by immigrants from their jobs. In fact, let me show you who Trump voters are. A March 2016 NBC survey showed that only a third of Trump supporters had household incomes at or below the national median of about $50,000. Another third made up fifty thousand to a hundred thousand, and another third made a hundred thousand dollars or more. So two thirds of Trump voters made over fifty thousand dollars a year. These voters, a lot of them are solidly middle class or better, and well educated, and deeply racist. Trump has that vote. Now that's not to say that everybody who cares about the borders being secure is a racist, but get, let's get real here. If you're sitting there calling them illegals and you believe that they're getting welfare and all these things and you believe the propaganda that they're all criminals or rapists and MS-13, then yes, you're either ignorant or racist. And that's just the truth of it. And the truth is you're actually less likely to be a victim of immigrant crime because they perpetrate less crime than native-born Americans. Now, maybe that's because they actually want to stay here so they're much more careful could be or it could mean that like i said before most people are not criminals and yes the some that argue that do get in here and do commit crimes should be deported of course they should and that's violent crimes but anyway let me get back to the rest of the poll results here now on the issue of separating children from their parents at the border so what do they think about that uh, 60% said the policy of separating children from their parents was a violation of human rights, and the UN would agree. Uh, now, this was a policy that was put in by Trump. This wasn't a policy that was actively enforced by any other administration. In fact, before Trump, the Obama administration did separate families where they believed the child was either in danger, being abused, or possibly being trafficked. So... Yes, child separation did happen under the previous administration, although not nearly as much. Now, look, if you're talking deportation, well, deportation, look, President uh, Obama had deported more people than President Bush. Now, here comes Donald Trump to blow that record away because he's got to be better at everything. Uh, so, but anyway, I, Obama did a lot of things that I didn't agree with and that, of course, being uh, the deporter in chief, was one of those things. So on immigration. But let's be fair, he did not come up with this policy. Now, there's one more thing here uh, in this poll uh, that I thought was interesting, and that's the number of Republicans that think that Trump is racist. Like I said, 49% of Americans think Trump is a racist, but when you ask Republicans, the number goes down to 11. 11% 11 of Republican voters say that they, they think Trump is racist. I wonder how many of those are like, and that's why we voted for him, because he is racist, because he agrees with us. I'd love to see the polling on that, or the breakdown on how many actually also agree with those policies and agree that, yes, we are racist, but at least you're admitting it, right? Uh, look, let me see here. Um, what's interesting as well about this is that 22% of Republicans also realized that Trump has emboldened racist people to express their beliefs publicly. Now, that's also uh, something that is very, very interesting on here uh, because we've seen a lot of that. In fact, look, since President Trump was elected, we've seen hate crimes rise. In 2017, they rose by 4%. So now the biggest in increase is surprisingly or unsurprisingly against Muslims that rose 19 percent. 
Now, what's surprising, and these are FBI statistics, the second largest increase was also against white people. These are hate crimes against white people. Now, that's about 17%. Now, those numbers are incomplete, to be fair. Absolutely 100%. Uh, because it is difficult to get those numbers. Uh, and according to the data that we do have, Jews, blacks, and Arabs are actually the recipients of the most hate crimes in America by far. So even though there's been an uptick in hate crimes against white people, I'm not saying that they're uh, the most discriminated. No, by far black people, Jewish people, and Muslims are, are, discriminating, are discriminated against far more than anybody else. So, at least from Republicans, though, there's a tiny bit of realization that, oh, yeah, it looks like uh, he's emboldening racists. Hmm. Now, overall, the poll is pretty disastrous among Republicans, but also among the American people. Kind of shows you that Republicans have done a pretty good job at couching racist language in the ideas of patriotism and national security. Oh, no, no, we're just securing the borders. Who are you securing it against? Brown people, because we're not securing the borders against white immigrants. In fact, uh, President Trump himself is like, why don't we get more immigrants from Norway? I'm cool with those guys. Why would anybody from Norway want to come here? Norway has, first of all, um, a Medicare, uh, a, a version of Medicare for all. So that's single payer health care. They have excellent education systems. They're the happiest country on earth. Why the hell would they want to come here? No, they wouldn't want to immigrate here. Um, but there are people that are living in terrible, horrific cir uh, circumstances and situations that do want to come here because, hey, look, America may not be the greatest country on earth, but it's a lot better than a lot of these places like Honduras and El Salvador, which right now are wracked by gang violence and, and drug violence and government corruption, uh, and, 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 and murders. So when you put that in perspective, it makes sense why immigrants would want to come here. Um, and of course, a lot of people on the conservative side, they don't want that because what they fear, the number one thing is the browning of America and becoming a minority themselves. So that's why they do this. That's why they come up with these policies. Um, and you have to know that a lot of the Republican policies and many of the politicians are deeply racist and at the end of the day would love nothing more than to just keep America white. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.